Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you're new to the channel, welcome and it's great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. You can also find a link in the description below to all of my playlists, of which there are 19 of them now. It's basically a table of contents. And of course, please hit subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't already. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on non-parametric methods or non-parametric statistics. More specifically, it is about something called the Kruskal-Wallis test. So in regular parametric statistics, you probably learned about something called the one-way ANOVA, where we were testing the equality of three or more populations. Well, the Kruskal-Wallis test is basically the same thing, but it's the non-parametric version of that test. So what we will do in this video is first talk about the concept of the Kruskal-Wallis test, and then we will go into Excel and actually calculate it. So let's go ahead and get to work. So first, a bit of background. So comparing more than two independent samples using a parametric test will lead us to use the ANOVA procedure. Now in that case, we would test most of the time if the means of the samples are equal. However, the assumption for ANOVA is that each population is normally distributed. The Kruskal-Wallis test allows us to compare more than two populations that violate the assumption of normality. That's why it's called a non-parametric test. So we use the sum of ranks for the observations, in other words, their locations relative to each other, versus the actual observations themselves. Again, this is a pattern in non-parametric statistics where we use the ranks. We sum the ranks or we check the signs of the ranks or both. So sum of ranks is what we're looking at. Let's visualize what we're talking about here. So in this first case, we have three populations. We can see that they do not overlap much at all. So population one is far to the left. Population two is near the center and population three is over to the right. So in this case, we would probably conclude that these three populations are not equal or are not the same. Now in this second case, we can see that population one and population two overlap quite a bit, while population three is by itself off to the right. Now in this case, again, we would conclude that these three populations are not the same. Even though population one and two seem to be pretty close to each other, population three is off to the side, and therefore that means all three are not equal. So I'll pause here to point out that just like in the regular one-way ANOVA, which will tell us if our populations are equal, it won't tell us necessarily where any differences might be. So the Kruskal-Wallis test is the same. So in the second case here, all we could conclude is that they are not the same, even though population one and two seem to be very close. So in this third case, we can see that all three populations overlap quite a bit. What we would conclude statistically speaking is that these three populations are the same. So that doesn't mean they're exactly the same, but it means they overlap enough to be considered statistically the same. So here's the problem we'll work with in this video. I call it Mumbai Starbucks. So 45 randomly selected coffee lovers from Mumbai, India, who often study at Starbucks, were asked to provide ratings for three stores. So 15 ratings per store. The reviews were for the Church Gate, the Natterman Point, and the Taj Mahal Palace stores. We'll call those C, N, and T, respectively. The survey covered five criteria. Cleanliness, service, facilities, drink quality, and food quality, each on a scale of one to five. Now the lowest score possible is five. That would be a one for each of the five categories. And the maximum is 25, which would be a five for each of the five categories. However, the score itself is not really important in the non-parametric case or in this Kruskal-Wallis test. It's the rank that is important. So first let's look at a couple of extreme cases so we can kind of see what we're doing here visually and numerically. So look at this first line here. What we are saying here is that the Nariman Point Store, when we put all of our observations in a rank, that it had the first 15 ranks all to itself. In the second line, the Churchgate Store 
had all of the middle ranks to itself. And then the Taj Mahal Palace store had the final set of ranks all to itself. So you can see here that we have our 45 observations. Nariman Point was 1 through 15, Churchgate 16 through 30, and the Taj Mahal Palace store 31 through 45. So there are no ties and there is no overlapping. Now what we can do here is sum the ranks for each of those three cases. So for the Nariman Point store, if we sum 1 through 15, we get 120. That is the sum of those ranks. For the church gate store in the middle, if we sum those ranks, 16 through 30, we get a sum of 345. For the Taj Mahal Palace store, if we sum 31 through 45, we get a sum of ranks of 570. Now if we sum all the ranks in total, it's 1035. So there are some fundamental things we can learn from this. First, if we add up all of our ranks, it's 1,035. So what we are doing is taking the sum of those ranks and then distributing them among the stores. For Nariman Point, the lowest possible sum is 120. We can see that for the Taj Mahal Palace store, the highest possible sum of ranks is 570. And in the middle, we have Churchgate, which is actually literally the middle of the sum of our ranks at 345. Now visually, it would look like this. So we have Nariman Point all the way to the left by itself. We have Churchgate in the middle all by itself. And then we have the Taj Mahal Palace to the right all by itself. So hopefully you can begin to see what we're doing here. Now let's take the other extreme where we alternate the ranks for each store. So we can go ahead and go one through 15, alternating Nariman Point, Churchgate, and Taj Mahal Palace keep going 16 through 30, and then go 31 through 45. So we alternate the ranks as we go. Now if we sum these up, this is what we get. The sum of ranks for Nederman Point is 330, the sum of ranks for the Churchgate store is 345, and the sum of ranks for the Taj Mahal Palace store is 360. Now again, you'll notice that the center of our data here is 345, and that should make sense. If you take 1,035, the sum of our ranks over here, and divide it by three, that's 345. So visually, this might look like this. So we have Nariman Point slightly to the left because it begins with the first rank. Then we have the Churchgate store, our second population, slightly to the right of that. And then the Taj Mahal Palace store, slightly to the right of population two, which is Churchgate. So again, this is our other extreme where the ranks actually alternate between the three stores. So here is our general hypothesis for the Kruskal Wallace test. It's very simple. Our null hypothesis states that all populations are the same, and our alternative hypothesis states that all populations are not the same. Very straightforward. So rejecting the null hypothesis means that there is a difference among the locations of the populations, but it doesn't tell us necessarily where. Now all Kruskal Wallace tests are one tailed because it uses it is based upon the chi-square test, or the chi-square distribution, to obtain a p-value. So remember, the chi-square is testing what we observe versus what we expect. So in the null hypothesis, where all populations are the same, we would expect the sum of the ranks for each of our three populations to be 1,035 divided by three, which is 345. So we are testing if the sum of our ranks is 345 for Nariman Point, 345 for Churchgate, and 345 for the Taj Mahal Palace Store. That's what we're testing using the chi-square test. And in this case, the chi-square test is appropriate because we're using ranks. We're not actually using the ratings that the stores were given. So what is the sampling statistic and sampling distribution for the Kruskal-Wallis test? The Kruskal-Wallis test is denoted by the letter H. And here is the formula for that statistic. Now, this looks pretty nasty, I know. We have all kinds of stuff going on in this formula, but I'll walk you step-by-step step through it when we go into Excel. So K is just the number of populations we have, which in this case is three. Now N sub I is the number of observations in each sample. So in this case, it's actually 15. Now the summation symbol is just the total number of observations in all samples. So in this case, it's 45. And R sub I is the sum of the ranks for that sample. So R sub I is just the sum of the ranks for Churchgate, the sum of the ranks for Nariman Point, 
and the sum of the ranks for the Taj Mahal Palace store. So this formula looks pretty ugly, but it's actually quite simple, and you'll see that when we go into Excel and do it. So what's going on with the summation symbol is that we're iterating through each sample. We're taking R squared, which is the square of the sum of the ranks, divided by the number of observations, and then we do that for each of our three samples, which in this case is our three stores. That's all that means. And again, when we go into Excel and actually do it, you'll see how it works. So all we do is compare our Kruskal Wallace H that we saw on the previous slide to the chi-square value for our chosen alpha level and our degrees of freedom, which is k minus one, which in this case we have three groups, as it's three minus one, so degrees of freedom would be two. So what we're asking is, is the sum of the ranks for each group the same? Now in this case, remember, we're testing whether or not the sum for Nariman Point, Churchgate, and Taj Mahal Palace are all equal to 345. And our p-value is the probability that our chi-square is greater than h. So the chi-square value actually comes from the table in the back of your textbook, an online tool, or whatever you're using, where you find that value for the chosen alpha level and degrees of freedom. So we take that value and compare it to our h. So our p-value is the probability that that chi-square value in the table is greater than our kruskal wallace statistic, which is h. So how do we do the Kruskal Wallace test step by step? And again, we'll go into Excel and do this after this slide. Number one, we place our samples into K columns. In this case, we have three columns for the three stores. In a new column, we then stack those K samples into one larger column altogether. In a fourth column, we rank each value in the stacked column. Now for any tied ranks, we use the average rank. In Excel, we use the function rank.avg, and we do that ascending. Then we sum the ranks for each sample, and in this case, we'll use a simple pivot table to help us do that. Then we calculate the Kruskal Wallace H test statistic. And then we compare a p value to the chosen alpha level using the chi square distribution. So we'll take the H we calculate in step six, we'll compare that to the chi square value for our chosen alpha level and degrees of freedom. We'll see which one is larger, and then we'll get our p-value from that. So let's get to it. Let's go into Excel and calculate the Kruskal Wallace test. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Let's go ahead and calculate the Kruskal Wallace H statistic. Now I've gone ahead and set up the spreadsheet just to save some time. Now a reminder that you can download this file. If you look in the description, you will see a link where you can go get this file that's blank, and then you can follow along with me if you want to. So if you want to follow along, pause the video, go to the link, download the file, open it up, put the video in one window or on one side of your screen and the spreadsheet on the other, and you can follow along step by step if you wish. A couple of reminders is that I try to use formulas wherever possible. That makes our model here very flexible. So let's go ahead and get calculating. So the first thing we need to do is pull over all of our ratings from our three samples in columns A, B, and C. So you can see that Churchgate has its ratings in column A, Natterman Point in B, and Taj Mahal Palace there in C. So let's go ahead and pull those over using formulas. So here in F2, I'll just do equals, then I'll highlight A2, hit enter, that'll pull over that 20 there in A2. Do the same thing for all of Churchgate by dragging down, and you can see that they're the same. Now we'll do the same thing for Nariman Point. So in F17, I'll put equals B2, enter, and then again, I will drag down all the way for Nariman Point, Taj Mahal Palace, so in F32 equals, then C2, it'll pull over the top observation in Taj Mahal Palace, and then I'll go ahead and drag down all the way to the bottom. Okay, so there are our ratings pulled over. So our next step is to find the ranks of each of our ratings. So we'll do that here in G2, we'll start there. So remember, it's the rank.average function, so equals rank.avg, click that, the number is the rating next to it there in column F, comma, and then I need the reference, which is all the ratings, so I will highlight all the ratings all the way down to the bottom there. But I want to make that an absolute reference, so I'll hit F4 on my keyboard. So I'll go ahead and make that absolute. Then I'll go ahead and put a comma and then one, because we want ascending, and then close. So we have the value, which is the rating itself, 
the range we're comparing it against, which are all of our ratings, and then one for ascending. I'll hit enter. And then I want to make sure all of those are populated. So I'll double click and there we go. So there are our ranks for each of our ratings. So the next thing I need is the sum of the ranks for each store. So I'll do that using a simple pivot table. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the store header, which is an E1. I'll hit Control and Shift and hold them down. Right arrow, that'll select everything over to column G, and then my down arrow, and that will select my entire table here. Then I'll go to Insert, Pivot Table. I want to go to Existing Worksheet. I'll go ahead and put that in J2. Right there, click OK. Now what I can do is just quickly sum up the ranks for each of our store. So in the pivot table fields dialog box, I will move store to rows, and then I will move rank to values, and it's already set to sum. So there are the sum of the ranks for each of our three stores. So the sum of ranks for Churchgate is 323.5, for Nariman Point, 252, and for Taj Mahal Palace, 459.5. And of course, as we expected, they sum up to 1,035. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and close the pivot table fields box. I no longer need that. And then we're gonna calculate the rest of our statistics here. So first we'll calculate K. That is just the number of groups we have. I could hard code this as three, but I'll do count. And then I will select just a row of our data over here. And that's three. So for N1, N2, and N3, Again, this is just the number of observations we have in each of our samples. So I'll use count equals count. Then I will use the column designation, A colon A, close. And that counts 15 numerical observations in column A. Now because we only have data in columns A, B, and C, that works. I always recommend keeping each variable or each store in this case in its own column, because then you can work on a column by column basis. So N2 is just Nariman point, so equals count B colon B, and then Taj Mahal Palace equals count C colon C, 15. And then for the total number of observations, we can do equals count A colon C, that selects all three, and now we have our 45. So we will break the calculation of our H statistic over here into parts. So I've color coded each part. So part one will be everything there in the blue, part two will be everything there in the orange, and then part three will be everything in the green. We'll do this step by step by breaking up into parts. So the first part is 12 divided by N sub T, which is our total observations, times the quantity N sub D plus one. So that's pretty straightforward. So here in J15, I will do equals 12 divided by, open parentheses, so N sub T is 45 here, times the quantity of N sub T plus one, close, close again. Now we have 0 0.00579710, that long number there. So we'll leave it as is. So part two is pretty straightforward. The first one is R squared, that is our numerator over here in the orange, for each of our sum of ranks. So all we do is equals, the R squared is the sum of the ranks, caret squared. See how that works? So now we do that for Nariman Point and Taj Mahal Palace. So equals Nariman Point sum of ranks, square that, equals, Taj Mahal Palace, sum of ranks, square that. Very good. Now all we do is divide those numbers by 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and take equals, then we go up to R squared N1, divided by N1 here, right there, which is 15, and hit enter. Now we can do the same thing for the next two observations. And you can see what we need here is the sum of those values. So I'll go into this value, equal sum, select those three, and close. Very good. I'm actually gonna make a little bit more room here by moving these down. Excellent. 
But for part three, I just need three times the quantity n sub t plus one. Very straightforward. So equals three times the quantity n sub t, which is here, plus one. Enter, 138. So now we just multiply those together. So equals part one, which is everything in the blue, right there, times the sum of our added ranks divided by the sample size, which is here, right there. Now what we have to do is minus the part three here, which is 138. When we have 8.5880193243. So that is our calculated H statistic over here on the right. So the next thing we need is our chi-square value. That's pretty straightforward. So equals chi-square dot INV. Remember, we want this to the right. This is cumulative over to the right. So we can do one minus 0 0.05, or we can just do 0.95. Doesn't make a difference either way. So 0.95, our degrees of freedom are three minus one, which is two, hit enter. And then our chi-square value there, or our chi-square critical value, is 5.99. So as we can see, the value of H is much higher than our chi-square critical value. So what is the actual p-value for our Kruskal Wallace H of 8.588, or 8.59? So we can use chi-square again, so equals chi-square, chi-square dot dis dot right tail, because remember we're doing one tailed, X is the value of H, comma, degrees of freedom is two, close, and enter. So our p-value is 0 0.0136 or 0 0.014. What do we do for our null hypothesis? Equals if our p-value, I should do the, the critical value. If our value of h is greater than the chi-square critical value here, then we reject the null. Otherwise, fail to reject. Hit enter. And then in this case, we'll reject the null. So we've automated that process. So as you can see, here are the steps for the Kruskal Wallace test. We take our three observations, stack them together, move the ratings over, then we rank the ratings based off the entire data set. Then we find some very simple values of K, our sample sizes and our overall sample size. And then we break this formula over here on the right, just down in the simple steps, piece by piece, put it all back together, and then based off our calculated H, our critical chi-square value, p-value, and then we can make our decision relative to the null hypothesis, which in this case, we reject the null. So we conclude that these three populations are not the same, and therefore the rankings for the three stores are not the same which if you look at the sum of the ranks for the three stores up in columns J and K, you can see that that is somewhat obviously the case. So let's go back to the presentation and finish this video up. So what are our results? And let's look at it visually. So our test statistic or H for the Kruskal Wallace test was 8.58. Our critical value for the chi-square is 5.99. Obviously H is greater than our chi-square critical value. That leads to the P value of 0.014. Now visually, this is what it looks like. So here is our chi-square distribution. You can see that we have two degrees of freedom. We have a critical value of 5.99, which is another way of saying that our alpha level, as you can see over here in the pink color, is 0.05. So the critical value and the p-value here are two sides of the same coin. So if you look down here in the graph, you can see where that cutoff is. It's basically at six. Our H, our test statistic, is 8.58. It's way over to the right of that cutoff point. So visually, this is what's going on. What we're saying is that if we reject our null hypothesis, like we do here, the value for H has to be to the right of this critical value of 5.99, or basically six. Okay, so that wraps up this video on the Kruskal Wallace test a way in non-parametric methods to compare three or more populations. And another way to think about it is that it's just the non-parametric version of the one-way ANOVA test. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you spending some of your time with me learning about these topics, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care.
Bye-bye.